Hi. Let's start over. Happens every now and then. I'm Roger Wakefield, lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. Now, as you see, technical happens. Uh, if you've never been here before, you may want to hang out. We have people here that want to get into the trades, people that are in the trades and want to get better, people that are in the trades and want to open their own company, and we have people that are in the trades, have their own company, and want to learn to use social media to grow their business. So we got cool things that we're working on, but the neat thing is, if you're here, we're glad you're here. If this is your first time here and you accidentally found this video because you were looking for something else and this is what was recommended to you, I recommend going through the channel, searching for the video that you were looking for and checking it out. But if you're here, do please hang around. Uh, do we have the battery turned on on the slide? Or do we turn it off? The slide. Do we turn it off? Yeah. So anyway, as you see, technical happens. We are having fun though. Uh, looking for different things. We've got new things going on all the time. But first of all, I want to jump in here into the comments. And let me see if I can figure this thing out. I want to say, man, we got people from all over the place. Yeah, do this real quick. If you're here, I know we, we were muted. We messed up. Uh, do this for me. If you will, put a comment in here. Let me know where you're at and what you do. I'm from Richardson, Texas. I'm a plumber, plumbing company owner. Whatever it is that you do or you want to do, man, put it in here and let us know. Uh, I'm playing with some things behind the scenes that we're working on trying to, to do cool stuff here. But do me a favor and just let me know what it is you do. I'm going to open up another window here so I can actually have a live stream up. That way I see <clears throat> what's happening in the live chat. And that way I can play around and be a little bit more engaging. Liz is going to put a comment up if it isn't yet up at the top to go in. And if you've got questions, we ask that you go over into the forum. Please go over there, ask your question. It'll it'll ask you a couple of different things. But what we're really doing some cool stuff, and we're having fun with it. So let me see if I can make this happen now. Do that and that. So here's the different kind of things we're working on. As you see, <clears throat> we installed a slider last week. We've had fun with it. We've been trying to learn how to use it. And Liz says, yes, it is pinned in the comments. So I am going to go over here. Click on this and see what I can do right here. Oh, I like that thumbnail. Grayson did a good job. All right. So we got things going on here. And I'm going to turn that volume all the way down. So we're good. But now I can see the live chat. Live chat. Grayson, you're right, brother. The, sl the slider is slick. You did a good job. Uh, so this kind of just kind of lets y'all see a little bit more of my studio, what we're doing, how we're doing it. I really try not to look at, at the slider camera, but, you know, of course, I'm going to every now and then. But, man, we got some cool stuff. Who's your daddy and what's he do? There you go. Sean Strong is definitely in the house. How's everybody doing today? Number one, this is Monday, so it's been, man, I, I have a busy weekend all the time. It's like it never ends. And I am going to try to come over here. I don't know if we've got Kajabi opened up yet. Not yet, so I'm going to do that. See if I can get over here and get logged in so I can see my questions or comments and whatnot. Great. There we go. Okay. So we're not having much luck there. So Liz, I may need you to text me the Kajabi login. Uh, if you've got it, if not, we will figure it out. But What have y'all been up to? So I've got, yeah, yeah, there we go. See, I knew that people would see the comments. Okay. So I'm going to scroll back up right here. 
where are people got new jersey master plumber we got some belgium good to have you in the house hope you're having a great day boss uh, poyo we are having a wonderful day uh joy says she already did that not sure what she did but i'm glad somebody did something makes it amazing architectural sheet metal 101 ontario canada look i got your email the other day uh, i don't know if it was an email or if it was a instagram message i've got it uh, and i will get back in touch with you it's just it has literally been a crazy week we're, we're running 90 miles an hour trying to get ready uh grayson and myself actually have to go to charlotte we're actually going to charlotte to be there friday to shoot video about pvc pipe about fittings things like that how it's made how it's done where they come up with ideas how they do testing a lot of different things so we've got a lot of cool stuff that we're working on i just hope that it all comes out good so anyway we're, we're definitely looking at having a good time while we do it so guitar 1301 a master plumber from new jersey and yeah here's a good one so it says Hey, Roger, do you have any tips on stopping a sewer vent from freezing up during the winter? Well, the thing is, truthfully, a sewer vent should not have water in it, so it shouldn't freeze up. Uh, I hope that helps. After our plumber in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, how are you doing? Good to have you in here. Definitely a long way from home, but you know what? Man, good to have you here. And we do get a lot of plumbers in here from Canada. I've actually tried reaching out to... Justin Trudeau about trying to help promote the trades in Canada. Um, actually interviewing the president of PHCC tomorrow about what we can do to help get people into the trades here in the United States. So we've got a lot of different things that we're working on and trying to make it all better. And I got to tell you, I, I love the fact that, you know, Architectural Sheet Metal owns a metal roofing company. And, and here they are in here watching what we do on social media and it's really pretty cool and this is a good one michael de carlo says if you have a dry trap how often do you have to pour water into it mike from toronto canada good to have you in here brother uh you know if i've got a dry trap and, and i'm worried about some different things uh i really man i, I try so many different things here's what i tell you you want to water it at least once a week just to keep it from drying out and it may, may not take that much but what you can do is try it try to put water in it see if that takes care of it if it does then literally go to uh if it does take care of it you can go longer and if you go longer that may be it right there jackpot if you go longer, what will happen is go till you start smelling it again, meaning try to try to make it last a little bit longer. You may be able to go two weeks. You may be able to go three weeks, but start with about once a week. If you're still smelling it, you may have to come down to five days. If you're not smelling it, try next time waiting seven days, eight days, nine days, 10 days, whatever it is, and move up and you'll be there. All right. Thoughts on tankless water heaters, color radio. I, I tell you what, I love tankless water heaters. I think tankless water heaters should be the way of the future because the ROI on them is fantastic most of the time. I think if it's a new build and you've got tankless there, it's going to be good. If it's designed properly, if the plumber uses PEX, if they oversize the system, there's a lot of things there, but I, I think they're great. I want to say hello to my brother, Mr. Sean Strong. Good to have you here. I hope everything is going well with you. David Michael is from Leveland, Texas, an apprentice plumber. Good to have you in here. So, David, are, as an apprentice, are you going through a, an apprentice training center? Are you working open shop under another plumber? How is it that you got into the trades and how's it going for you? Is it, is it working well? So head down to the next one here, Steve Harloa. Good to have you in here as always. Says aloha, everyone. I'm going to have to miss today's show. Have to be in Waikiki in 30 minutes for an estimate. You know, 
if you're wanting sympathy for us, Steve, I really don't think you're going to get it. I mean, you can try, but let me see. It's a uh, 10 in the morning there. So, man, I think you're probably doing pretty good. All right, 533 says, I'm from Indiana, and I'm a miner. Good deal. Got some cool people in here. Denmark, environmental engineering, but planning to do some plumbing for the house. And you came to a place to learn it. I love that. And we have Foxy Gaming here. How are you doing? I don't know where my, there it is right there. And I don't know why I don't see that. Yeah, let me jump way down here. Say, Jack, how are you doing? It says, why is a water heater replacement expensive? You know, Jack, number one, lots of lots of different reasons. The re reason number one, the plumber has to come over, look at everything, see how it's hooked up. We have a service fee. So we actually charge a service fee to get a plumber out there. The reason being, we're sending out a, drug tested licensed background check plumber in a truck that that has most of the materials to do just about any job not all of them but but we do try to have them all on there and the, the big thing about it is we've got to shut down the water heater drain it down it probably takes i'm going to say an average of i'll say a ballpark average three hours to change out a water heater now if it's up in an attic if it's upstairs in a closet if it's not real easy to get in and out of the garage. I mean, there can be a lot of different reasons, but you know, to do it right, make sure that you test everything, you check the flue pipe, you change the valves out, you update it per current code. There, there's a lot of different things involved. And I know that a lot of people say, look, I can go down to the hardware store and buy a water heater for you know four or 500 bucks. I understand that. And, and you know what, man, people are more than welcome to do it. My thought behind it is something like a water heater, especially a gas water heater. I would want to make sure that it is installed by a professional. The, it's going to make the warranty valid. It's going to make sure that it's inspected and done right. Most plumbers, most plumbers should get their water heaters inspected. I know all of them don't. So say, Jack, I'll, I'll just say, number one, that's my idea. Let me know why you think they shouldn't be expensive. And I'm literally just asking to get your feedback on it. I see the value of it. I see why I would want a plumber there. I, I want it done right. I want a good quality water heater. I want to make sure that, that they didn't use the cheapest connectors, that they didn't use shark bite fittings, that there's a million different things. So tell me why you think it shouldn't be very expensive. And, and I'm really just curious as to what you think. Uh, gotta like that. Zap Somber, how we doing? Good to have you in here. Foxy Gaming, uh, I, I don't have a girlfriend. I got a wife and she's my boss. So kind of is what it is. Sean says with me, I'm old and want an apprentice to do this, to do this label for me. Yeah, I get it. After hours plumber again, Roger, have you used a lot of Upanor? Trying it for the first time next week. I got to tell you, I love Upanor. Uh, Sean, do you use Upanor? I, I got to tell you, I love it. The reason being, you extend or, or enlarge the pipe instead of putting reduced size fittings in there and crimping them in. I like Upanor a whole lot better than I do PEX and, and crimp. I really do. And I wish that I could find, let me see this here. Maybe it'll let me I'll click on it this way. Hmm. I am trying to get into Kajabi. You know, I had the link last week to find the forms and now I'm getting in there and I'm like, okay, wait, where is it that it went to? Here we go. I think I got it. Maybe, maybe. So my question is for, for the plumbers in here, how many of y'all like Upanor? Uh, since, since I was asked that question, do you like it? Have you used much of it? And what do you think about it? I don't think I can go right here. Let's 
date is looky here. Sorry, guys. I am trying to find all the questions and comments. Those of y'all that have put comments down in the form, do me a favor and let me know. I think that I just found it. It's thinking. So am I. So if you like Upanor, let me know what is your favorite thing about it. Do you like Upanor compared to copper? Do you like Upanor compared to PEX? Or, or do you just like Upanor because it, it's a little bit different? Uh, Mr. Steve Harloa, thank you for the super chat. Says, Aloha, Mr. Wakefield. And brother, I'm Roger. Uh, says, Aloha, Mr. Wakefield. No sympathy needed. LOL. I'll be listening while I drive. Much love and aloha to everyone. Have a beautiful day. Plumbers, without them, you'd have nowhere to go. Boy, isn't that the truth? I'm going to pin that up here if I can get down there and find it. Looky there. I love that. Thank you so much. All right. So I found my forms. Now I'm trying to figure out how to open them up. All right. Not having much luck today. All right. So Amber, maybe you reach out to Matthew and tell him, ask him what the orders are, the links that I go in to open up the forms in here. I can see them just for some reason. It's not letting me open them. So let's talk plumbing. So right now I'm going to be answering questions strictly from the chat, which is pretty cool. And Sean says no open or around here at all. It's PEX B and not oversized. So Sean, let me ask you a question. If it's not oversized, do you, have you noticed the flow restriction? Because we run into flow restrictions. You know, normally it's after the water heater, after they've done all the fittings getting to the water heater, then all the fittings getting back out. Let me know your thoughts on it. Because I tell you, when we go in and repop the water heater and as much as we can, as much of the popping as we can to get back to everything else, it, it seems to take away the problem. And man, when we get it taken away, I mean, you can definitely tell the flow restriction difference. So it really is pretty cool. All right, try one more time down here. Not much luck. All right, guys, I keep trying to get over into the form to see what we can do. And as you see, I'm having technical issues. And I know that I knew how to do that, but we will figure it out. So, man, I get some crazy questions sometimes. Back up to Sean. So, new Panora, let me know what you think. Steve Hale says he loves it. And Drew Lib says, hey, is plumbing a great career for graduating high school student? Greetings from Vancouver, Canada. Number one, I tell you, absolutely. And, and here's my thoughts behind this. And Dre, I think it's it's a really big deal, and especially up in Canada, because I know y'all are short-handed for tradespeople also. If you look at the United States, we need more plumbers. We literally, I mean, man, I could probably hire three or four plumbers today. And I know it's like that all across the United States, and I know it from talking with other plumbing company owners. And I was actually in San Antonio a couple of weeks ago. What I'll tell you is I think it's a great career choice. The reason being supply and demand here in the future, <clears throat> here in the next five years, more people are retiring from the trades and more people are not getting into it, meaning the numbers are really limited. And I think that's a bad thing because I really think that the opportunity is phenomenal for people getting into the trades right now. If supply and demand keeps doing what it's doing, we're going to be shorthanded plumbers, electricians, and HVAC techs. I think that's going to be our biggest issues. And if you look at why, it's really sad, but it's because the secondary education people have been pushing people towards college. And they told them, look, if you don't go to college, you're never going to amount to anything. A lot of different things. The bad thing about it is, or I must say the funny thing about it is, whenever I go speak at career days or anything at all like that, 
I literally talked to the counselors and talked to them about getting people into the union, getting people in the PHCC, different things like that. The bad thing about it is whenever I explain to the counselors that plumbers graduating in five years from, say, a union training program or possibly a PHCC, if they're working with a good company, the money that they make is crazy. I mean, literally out of high school, you can join a union or PHCC right now. And in about five years, you're going to make seventy to $80,000 a year, depending on what part of the country you're in, what the pay scale is. There's a lot of different things. But unfortunately, counselors in the education system, counselors in the education system have been pushing people so bad to go the other direction. They tell them, hey, you can't make enough money doing this. You're not going to amount to anything. And the sad thing is that's not true. To be honest, the pay is phenomenal. You can make really good money, and it really does. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, after hours, Plumber says, seen the flow is better, and the warranty is 25 years. And I agree with you. The, the, the flow is so much better. Everything good? Oh, cool. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so... Yeah, and Stephen Hale says, best system on the market. Caleb says, we expand Zern. It's more affordable and works great. Now, I haven't heard of that yet, so that's definitely different. Yeah, I think Coupinor is great, too. And so Jack says, well, it's only three lines and draining the old water heater. You know, and I, and I understand that, but I've seen some old water heaters that, that can take an hour to drain. Uh, you end up having to cut them apart, drop a line in them, use a suction pump on them. A lot of different things here. And, and, and I know people think it's only three lines, but we've got to be responsible for the warranty. If there's a leak, we've got to come back. There's a lot of different reasons behind it. I, I agree. Water heaters aren't cheap, but I, I'm telling you to me, I think it's worth it to have a plumbing company do it. Keller Brim says, I'm a journeyman plumber in Missouri, planning on moving to Texas. Any advice on getting your license in Texas? Absolutely. Number one, start now. The reason being right now, I think Texas still has an easier plan to help people get a license, meaning you can pretty much get a provisional license pretty easy. Caleb, I'll ask you what part of Texas are you wanting to move to and what kind of plumbing have you been doing? Are you residential? Are you commercial? What have you been up to? Service, new construction, put it in there and I'll try and help you as much as I can. Mr. Stephen Hale, Massachusetts, love it, easy to install. Uh, I, I tell you what, and I think that Upanor is just going to get bigger and better. The reason being, it, it saves us labor. It, it's time, man, it, it's it's a time saver. It, it doesn't take near as long to put together. It doesn't take near as long to prep. There's so many different things, and I just, I really, you've got to love a piece of pipe that is continuously shrinking, trying to get back to its original size, so it's constantly trying to make that seal better. So, I think, personally, that is fantastic, and I think that helps a lot. I'm trying to bump this down just a little bit and see what I can do here. So let me see who else has any comments. <clears throat> Not about pecs. Okay. Hate it. Can make, uh, can't make close offsets and cracks in sunlight. And I got to tell you, it's, it's something you need to keep an eye on. The, the UV really for any situation, you, you've really got to look at are you protecting it? And, and we keep ours inside the shop. It's not out in the sun. So you do have to be careful, but you've also got to worry about the people that have actually been carrying it around on their trucks. Maybe it was on a delivery truck or out in the yard for a while. And there's a lot of things about it that, you know, it's just uncertain. You're not going to know. And it, it really is. It's kind of crazy because like you said, the UV can damage it and it can be a problem. One month says, have you ever used Ligma pipe before? I have not. Uh, never even heard of it. So can't help you much on that one. 
Nobody important says, and I love that name. Uh, nobody important says I prefer to use ProPress copper, but if I do use PEX, okay, ProPress or copper, but if I do use PEX, I use Upanor. Uh, a ProPress copper. And I got to tell you what, I've done the Milwaukee ProPress, the Rigid ProPress, the Nibco ProPress, uh, a lot of different brands. And I got to tell you what, I think ProPress is a lot like Upanor. I like it. It's time saving. It's going to help us get our job done faster. And anything that we can do to save time and money out in the field, anything that we can do to save labor is, is really going to be a big deal. And it's going to help. It helps us as company owners be more profitable. And, and, you know, I ask plumbers all the time, my plumbers, you know, would you rather work for a profitable company or an unprofitable? Because it, it's us guys that can help make it all happen. <clears throat> uh, how much should a plumber charge per hour? And Jack, that's a good one because really, and, and that's going to be up to, it's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to the area that you're in. What, what do the best plumbers around you make? And how much would you have to pay that plumber to get him to work for you? And I ask that because the, the big thing to me is if I'm looking at hiring a plumber, I've got to make sure that my pay structure will support him at what he's expecting to be paid. And don't get me wrong, I don't let all my plumbers just set their own pricing, but I've got to look at what is the going rate for plumbers in my area. And I've got to make sure that the way I have my pay structure set up, it works. Meaning I've got to know my numbers. I've got to know what my ter materials cost. I've got to know what my labor costs. I've got to know what my overhead costs. It's really hard to say how much could or what should a plumber charge per hour because for each plumber, it's going to be different. If I'm competing against a plumber that's working out of his house and he's really, he has no overhead, maybe he doesn't even have insurance or anything like that. If I'm competing with him, it's really, it's at an unfair advantage to me. Because I need to charge more for insurance, for the office, for, for new vehicles, for all the overhead, for the people that are in here. Competing with, you know, chucking a truck, it, it's really hard because the problem that we run into is he doesn't have to pay for a lot of things that I pay for. And a lot of these smaller plumbing companies, they may not even be paying for permits and inspections that they may be cutting the system short. And that's something that I have to deal with. So what I tell you is you need to know what it costs you, meaning what does it cost you to go out and do an hour of labor some, for somebody? And you may not just be able to figure it for one hour. You may need to figure the whole day. Are you getting 100% production? Meaning if your guy's working eight hours, is he billing eight hours for a day? So different ways to look at it, but it's just a, a great way to think about it. You've got to know what your costs are. So. Garrison Gary says, depends on the job. And I get that. I, I completely agree with that. I really think that, you know, I've seen a lot of people do pro press and pecs on commercial jobs that you look at it and it's like, man, this install could look a whole lot better. So a lot of different ideas and things like that, but you, you've got to know what it takes you to do it. Dre says, Hey, Roger plumbing is plumbing a great career. Okay. Yes. Answered that one a while ago. It absolutely is. Uh, U.S. Soldier 137, Oklahoma. Sorry to hear that. Uh, sorry, I'm a Longhorn fan, so, you know. But that's okay. Uh, so, Garrison Gary says, Hey, Roger, just wondering if there are any racially exclusive unions for the trades. Uh, you know, I don't think so. I've, I've never heard of anything like that. I'm not saying that there aren't. I don't see why you would want anything like that or what it would benefit anybody. I just, man, I've never even heard that one. Chance Thomas, how are you doing? Good to have you in here. Uh, after hours, Plumber says we're repopping Poly B. Yeah, I bet you are. Uh, not sure if the flow will change much. Repopping with B. Okay. 
And man, if you have too many fittings in there, it will definitely do it. Patrick Gallagher says, any tips for someone who wants to be a plumber in Ireland? Yeah, Patrick, it, it actually be the, the same tips that, that I would give somebody here. Number one, you want to constantly look at where the growth is, meaning are service companies hiring? Is there construction going on? What's happening? And is there anything happening in your trade to make you think that there's going to be a bigger supply and demand? Like I'm talking about here, with everything going on, we have literally got more people retiring. We got less people getting in the trades. And, and I think that's going to drive supply and demand up what where people are going to really use a lot to get there. Let me look at something real quick. I know Liz put a new link up in top for the Google document, and I think this might be it. And it is. Uh, Liz put a new comment or, or link up there. And, you know, like I said, I'm having a hard time logging into my Kajabi. So there is, she did put a link up there. So any of y'all that ask questions in the beginning may want to come in and do it again. I'm going to jump over in the Google Docs real quick uh, and go through here. Uh, so Matt Foley already answered your question. Julian Pineda says, is going for an associate degree in plumbing worth it if I start going to college at 16? Number one, I would say anytime you can get an associate's degree, it's going to help you. Now, I know that sounds crazy because I literally tell people all the time, like, you don't have to go to college to be a plumber. And, and to be honest, you don't. My thought behind it is if you have the ability to go to school and you can get an associate's degree in plumbing, it's not going to hurt you. And especially if it can help you make more money faster once you do get out and get a job. So, you know, like I was talking about in Ireland while I go to Patrick, find the people that are hiring whether it's service or new construction, first of all, figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. And, you know, y'all can go to my YouTube channel in the top right corner. There's that plum study where there's a free mini course to help you figure out what kind of plumber do you want to be. Commercial, residential, uh, new construction or service, union or non-union. And I ask you all these questions based on my history, my past, and what I know. So, yeah, is it worth going to college? Man, if, if you can go to college, if you can afford it or your parents are helping you or something like that, and it can help you make more money faster later, absolutely, I think that could be good. Gustavo says, how to unlock a toilet with a water high? If you mean unclog one, uh, a plunger works great. Uh, I love my closet auger. So, you know, different things like that. And, you, and you know, what you may have to do is pump some of the water out. Either get in there with a cup, get in there with a bucket, do whatever you have to do. Get rid of some of the water and make it, make it go better. Jesse Garza says, the whole home filter you posted about how effective it is against well water. Oh, how effective is it against well water? I'll tell you what, there's not, the system that we use, I would not recommend for well water. Uh, you know, the, the reason being, and I'm not sure which video you're talking about. I've got the whole home system that I have at my house, and I've got the one that I did in the video just a couple of weeks ago. I think well water needs a little bit more special treatment, meaning my sister has lake water. She lives on a lake, and there's a pump down in the lake that literally pumps it up in. It goes through a water softener. It goes through carbon filtration, and it goes through UV sterilization. And to me, that's exactly what all I would want. I would want it filtered as much as possible to try to make things happen. All right. Jumping back over here in the chat for just a second. Man, finding the same questions here and there. After our plumber says, I went to college, 30K in debt, plumbing then saved me. And man, it, it's the way it is. And I don't mean that bad, but, you know, counselors and high schools have been telling people for years, look, you don't have to go to college if you're going to amount to anything, you know, or I'm sorry, 
don't get a job in the trades. You have to go to college. If you don't go to college, you're not going to amount to anything. And I got to tell you, I know so many people that went to college that are not working in their field compared to, I know tons of people that didn't go to college that went to trade school. They love what they do. They don't have $30,000 in debt or, or maybe they do, but it, it's because they bought a new toy. It, it's not because they owe somebody for education. I like this here. It says we really don't need more electricians though. I know Sean, isn't that the truth? And, and Julie says she loves the new camera. How many of y'all have noticed the new camera? The and, and I know that's why I keep looking down. What do y'all think about it? We've got a camera here on a slide that kind of shows you a little bit more of a view, almost like a behind the scenes of what we're doing, how we do it, things like that. Just curious as to what y'all think about it. Okay. I'm going to say Andre. Hope I got that right. If you can't pronounce my name, just call me Andrew. There are less and less plumbers here in the Czech Republic, mostly because people don't want to do it. You know, and, and that's a great way to look at it because that's why a lot more people don't get into it over here is it, it's hard work and you might get dirty. Uh, there, there's nothing bad about it. And I tell people all the time, look, don't not get into plumbing because you think you can't do math or because you may be covered in poop. In 40 years of plumbing, I've probably only really pretty much been covered in it once. And it's part of a story that I tell the, you know, the, the first time I realized how bad it could be, but that it couldn't get any worse. And then the, the big thing for me after that is, Look, as a service plumber, maybe I get some splashed on me every now and then. But you know what? It washes off. So you're right. A lot of people don't want to do it, and I think that's sad. After our plumber says here in Canada, apprentice is 19 an hour plus, journeyman 45 an hour. And, and that's great. The neat thing about that is all around the United States, plumbers make different money, meaning in, in New York and California, they probably make 70 or $80 an hour on the check. Here in Texas, it's about 32, 35 an hour. So there's a big difference depending on where you go. And the benefits packages are different. Up in New York, I think they work 35 hours a week. That's a full week. They've got great packages. Down here in Texas, well, it's a 40 hour work week. So you got to look at it everywhere and figure out how to how to do it better. Now, I got to tell you, I, I saw this and man, it, I almost got sick at my stomach. It says, local hardware store just told me every plumber in the town just uses shark bites now. Man, I'll tell you what, whatever town you're in, if you want to get a good reputation, use solder, use flux, use copper, make repairs the right way. And I got to tell you, uh, you'll build a reputation as the plumber doing things right and it'll work. The wonderful Miss Kim Bernard, best plumber ever. I, I don't know which one of y'all she's talking about. You know, she knows me, so I doubt she's talking about me. I'm joking. Good to have you in here, Kim. Thank you so much. Alan Smith says, as a non and former union business owner, what's your impression of the union presence in Texas? Looking to get into the trades and want to know if I'll have to work in the UA as an apprentice. You know, the neat thing about it is you won't have to, meaning there are plenty of opportunities in Texas to work non-union. If you, you've, if, and if you're not sure yet or, or what you, not sure what type plumber you want to be, you might go take that free mini course I was talking about. Because here's what I want to tell you is, first of all, figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. If you want to be a commercial plumber, a new construction commercial plumber, the union may be the best thing for you. And what I mean by that is, you know, they will spend five years training you, teaching you to read blueprints, teaching you to do a ton of things. What they won't do, at least here in Dallas and Texas, teach you how to do residential service. Uh, that was my problem with the union. That's why I got out. You won't have to work in the UA or anything like that. That's going to be up to you, but you've got to figure out what it is you want to do, how you want to do it, and what you can make happen. Uh, those of y'all that have not seen it yet, 
this is a link to my subreddit. I would recommend going over there and following it. If you've got great pictures, great video, anything at all about plumbing, man, do me a favor, go over there. Uh, we find a lot of things over there that we literally use to make YouTube videos out of. We get great content over there. So if you've got anything you can do, go over there and put it and share it. And hopefully Mr. Sean Strong will check it out and tell you he likes it or doesn't like it. And we'll see what we can do with it. Back over into the forum, guys. Oh, and Grenholm says, so I completely torn between HVAC and plumbing. Not really sure which trade would really be better in the long run. Maybe you could help me out. I got to tell you, and, and and this is a good question, Owen, because I'm a certified HVAC technician too. I've studied it. I've done it. Man, they're both going to be good. Uh, you've got to literally, and, and the free mini course may be a great thing for you. You've got to figure out what it is you want. And that'll help you. Do you want to work on residential in people's houses? Do you want to work on commercial and big jobs? Do you want to work with big duck? What What is it you want to do? And, you know, those are questions you got to ask yourself. Now, you can work union either one or non-union either one. But the questions that I would ask you are, you know, do you, would you rather be up in somebody's attic in the summertime or, you know, maybe out in the yard doing a ditch or something? I don't get me wrong, plumbers go up in the attic too to do water heaters sometime. So there's a lot of different opportunities available. Uh, go take that free mini course and let me know what you think after that. And, and the reason I say that is that it, it literally, it's going to make all the difference in the world to let you figure out because it's going to ask you questions and help you figure out where you think you can do your best. All right, back over into the forum. Liz, thank you for fixing that. I appreciate that. Preston says, in your class, you stated you asked for 475 starting out. What should I ask for starting out nowadays? Preston, and this is really good because that was 40 years ago. And, you know, 40 years ago, that, that, that wasn't too bad for starting out. Somebody with zero experience getting into the trade. What I will tell you is nowadays, look at what the unions are paying. And, and it really depends on where you're at. But here in the Dallas area, unions are probably starting out at about $17 an hour. And I would think that anybody that, that can talk about themselves in a good way, that can interview well, and, and that's why now we've made videos to teach people how to interview, but people that want to do well and really get in and take care of themselves watching these videos can help you learn to go through the interview process better. And I truthfully, I'm one of these people that I think learning how to go through the video process can be amazing or the interview process. And I've got videos for that, but it teaches you questions to ask. It teaches you things to do. And if you can get their attention and become memorable to them, it's going to help you a lot. So It's hard to tell you what to ask for, but I will tell you this. It's a whole lot more than four seventy five dollars an hour now. Jake. Jake got stuck, so that's probably not very good. See, I don't answer stupid questions. Sorry, guys. Angel. Yeah, we got, got a few stupid ones. Ian says, what tool do you use the most on your job site? Now, I've got a go bag, and, and I call it my go bag because it's a residential service plumber. We literally, you know, we go up to the house and we walk into people's house, and we may know what we're going on there to work on, but we don't always know what all's entailed. So I've got a bag that has like slip joint pliers, an adjustable wrench, tape measures, lights, maybe maybe more than one light, maybe, maybe a lot for my forehead, uh, maybe smaller tools like needle nose pliers, things like that, that I can get in and do different things with. I may be going in to work on an angle stop. I may be in going in to work on a 
lavatory, a kitchen or tub and shower valve, a lot of different things, but having a good tool bag, what is the most common tool or the most popular or what do I use the most? And it's probably a tape measure, a pair of channel locks. Uh, you know, w w one that I use all the time is, is actually my Leatherman Crunch. And, and you'd be surprised how many jobs that I actually pull that out on and use it. And, and it does, it, it works well. All right. How much data starting out? Talked about that one. Says Roger, do you support Black Lives Matter? I, I support all lives matter. I, I don't think anybody's life is more important than any of the others. I hate to see the racial injustice through the police department, but I definitely think all lives matter. And I, and I think it, as human beings, we should all look at it that way. Cole says, struggling finding an apprenticeship near me. Applied and have done open house interviews, but no word back. And I hate hearing that. Uh, could it be that their class rotations haven't started yet? You know, and, and that's a good way to look at it because, and I mean, think about it with all the social distancing and everything that we've done, a lot of schools shut down for a while. And the problem that we ran into is that a lot of them haven't opened back up yet. I think that a lot of the online training was kind of tough and people hadn't got moved on in the system. I think that a lot of the companies, I mean, think about it. There's a lot of big jobs that haven't got going back up yet, although there are some that, that are starting to do it. You know, Julie and I travel a lot for Master Networks and in San Antonio, Austin, and Houston, and you see skyscrapers or tower cranes everywhere. And I love seeing that because that's that lets me know that the industry is booming, it's growing, construction is going on, and this isn't just cranes sitting there. They're actually working. So I think that that part is phenomenal. And I really think that it, it's a sign that, look, things are moving the right direction. And to me, more people are going to be hiring. The union, PHCC, places like that, they're going to be looking for more people in there too. Uh, okay, and Alan Smith, again, yeah, I asked, answered this a while ago, and I like this. You're in the Hill Country, Central Texas. Uh, I really think that, you know, going union is not something you have to do. Although I got to tell you, uh, I think that the union in Austin is fantastic. I really like the one down in Houston. I just think that the one here in Dallas really kind of gave me an unfair shake, but it is what it is. Uh all right, so Mark says, 12-year-old tank water heater, recently drained, anode is 85% intact, tank still pops when heating. Is that a concern? Uh, number one, if it's 12 years old, recently drained, I never drain water heaters that old. I think that the, they cool down, and then you heat them up again, the thermal expansion, I think, is too much. Uh, is it gas or electric? And the reason that I ask is, you know, you, there could be calcium and magnesium buildup on the, I mean, on the heating elements. Could be different things like that. Uh, it doesn't concern me as long. Look, water heaters make noise. When, when you boil a pot on the stove, it makes noise. So my big thing is I, I don't mind the fact that they make noise. I want to watch it and make sure they're not leaking or anything. But what I will tell you is, as, as a 12-year-old water heater, I would definitely be looking at it being time to replace it. My question to you is, how long is the warranty on it? Is it a, you know, six year, eight year? What type warranty is it? And because, I mean, if it's 12 years, it's beyond it, but I'd still want to know, was it designed for 12 years or is, was it designed for six? And where's it located? One, one of my big concerns is, is it in an area that if it leaks, it's going to cause damage? Because if so, that would give me another reason there to start looking at trading it out. Uh, well, no, this is kind of crazy. All right, so so let, let's see here. Let me read this one here. This is interesting. It says, Roger, 
I found that certain types of malt whiskey are actually incredibly efficient in dissolving many non-toilet safe products quickly. Maybe you could do a video on it. Well, number one, I don't want to waste whiskey in a toilet. Uh, you take a pint of whiskey and boil it and put green gobbler in it and then somehow combine it. Yeah, I don't know that that's one that I want to do. I try to try to use things per manufacturer's recommendations and see if they work. Don't get me wrong, it sounds interesting. Uh, and you know what? If you've done it, video it, put it up on my subreddit. Uh, Sean Strong will have fun with it, I promise. And let me jump through here real quick. All right, gaming with Mo, slow down, brother. All right, back over in the form. Remember, guys, if you have questions that you want answered, jump over into the form. Chris says, installed new water heater burner, and it sounded like a plane flying over when you lit the pilot. And each time I turn on the hot water, what could that be? I, I don't know why it made so much noise when you lit the pilot, because the, the pilot is literally just a very small flame, very low gas flow. I don't know why you got any loud noises from that. Uh, here's what I would tell you. Video it with sound. That way we can hear it. Put it over on my subreddit. Uh, you've got a link for it right there on the screen. Put it over there. Uh, I'll listen to it. Sean will listen to it, and we'll tell you what we think. That's kind of crazy, though. Tom Crook says, is that Crook? Yes. Tom Crick says, Has you, have you ever had someone from the UK work for you? And if so, how did your methods differ? You know, Tom, I haven't. Uh, I, I will tell you this. There is such a supply and demand, such a need for plumbers over in the United States right now. Man, plumbers from anywhere can come over, contact the Texas State Board before you do. As long as you can document your hours and things like that, they will they will help you get over here and get your license quicker. So. I haven't myself particularly had anyone, but there is a way to get your license quicker. I love stupid questions. I don't know why y'all ask them. You know I'm not going to answer them anyway. Uh, AJ says, what do you think about the longevity of ProPress? And I got to tell you, I, I think, number one, I think ProPress is going to be around for a while. I, I really... I think that not only is, is it going to be around for a while, it's going to grow because more and more plumbers are starting to go to it because it saves money. And at the end of the day, almost every plumbing company in the world out there is there to make money. Now, I'm sure there may be some not-for-profit companies. I know there's times that I think that we are, but you know, you've got to look at what can you do to help your plumbers get the job done faster, get it done better and still provide value to your customers. And I truthfully think that, man, ProPress is a great way to do it. So that, it will be around for a while. And like I said, I think it's only gonna grow and get better. And at the end of the day, anything that will help us do our job faster, make more money for ourselves and our company, it, it really is, it's gonna be a big deal. Christy says, hello, Roger, are you going to be, are you going to be fighting capitalism? I, I'll tell you what, and she's in roofing. Good for you. Uh, you know, here, here's the deal. Guys, I, I think that we're all created equal and we have the opportunity to do amazing things. And I think we should all be doing it. Most experience I've ever, or most disgusting thing I've ever had is, is dealing with, you know, people that don't take care of their own plumbing, take care of it well. Hey, Roger, notice you do a lot of repairs under slabs. Do you have a video or can you explain how you go about backfilling without compromising the integrity of the slab in the future? Uh, that's a really good one, Mike. And, and yeah, that's one that actually Grayson asked me today. I don't know if Amber is still in here. I need to talk to her and find out if we have backfilled. We just did a big video Friday. If y'all hadn't seen it, it's really pretty cool. But I need to talk to Amber and find out if that has been backfilled or if it's been started yet. That's one that we're literally 
Uh, it was great getting to go out there the other day and, and look at it and see it and see where we're at and what, what the plumbers are doing. So that's one that, man, we'll, we'll get over and we'll be, that's one we want a video doing that. Carlos says, greetings from Italy. Uh, do you use hemp with iron pipes or do you stick with Teflon? Actually, over here, it's all Teflon. We use Teflon tape, Teflon pipe, uh, pop dope, or our pop dope actually has Teflon in it. So, yeah, we're not using hemp for that. We use hemp for a lot of things over here. That's not one of them. Tyler Mullen says, Roger, current college graduate with a degree in business and entrepreneurship. I'm currently in trade school for plumbing and love it. How meaningful could my degree be in terms of career opportunities? You know, the career opportunities are going to be fantastic. And, and I say that because if you've got a degree in business and you're learning the trades, you know, if you want to work for yourself one day, here's what the cool thing is. You're going to understand it better than most people. And not just working for yourself, but maybe even for someone else. I think what I would probably try to do Tyler would be go to work for the top plumbing company that you want to work for or that you want to own one day. And I don't know if your plan is to own your own or, or what it is, but my thought here is go to work for a company that's doing the kind of plumbing that you want to do, learn everything you can from them and help them grow, learn to implement systems and processes and do anything and everything you can to make things better. And the reason I say that is if you're working for someone else and you have the opportunity to, to try to build systems and process and make things better, then one day when you want to go open your own company, you've already tried some things and it can possibly help you out a lot or it could possibly make them say, hey, look, we want to keep you around forever or maybe even one day they just decide to sell to you. The opportunities out there are fantastic. And I think any education you can get yourself is going to help you do better. Uh, here's a good one. James, Can James Crandall says, are there any disadvantages to installing a PEX manifold system? I, I really think the only disadvantages might be the constant flow reduction from the size of the pe PEX fittings. If you're upsizing the system, I don't think you'll have a problem. So I think that you've got definitely good opportunity. Uh, just remember to upsize it. I love the manifold systems. I think they're so cool that you've got one spot in the house that you can go in and shut off water to just one fixture. So guys, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm only going to answer questions about plumbing and things like that. Uh, as long as it's tied to plumbing, I'm good, but... You know, my political views, your political views, they don't have to be the same. It, it, it doesn't matter what we think. What matters is, you know, can we, can we find a way to all work together and do things? And to me, I think that we can. Jamie Whelan says, hey, Roger, greetings from Dublin, Ireland. Just wondering where you would, where would be the best place to travel to after I become fully qualified as a plumber? You know, the neat thing is, where do you want to work? Uh, I look at where I'd like to go, you know, I, and I would love to be on a beach somewhere. So, so Hawaii would be great for me, Steve, if you're in here, I'll fill out the application today. Uh, you know, always looking at what can we do to get where we want to be. And, and if I want to be on a beach somewhere, why not try to find a job in an area like that? So that's what I would tell you, Jamie. Figure out where you want to be. Where do you want to be in the world? And how can you find a job there to help you get there sooner? David Vasquez says, how safe is it tunneling and how do you backfill? You know, number one, tunneling is safe because we have dig crews come in and do it. We've got slab that's basically on uncompromised ground. Uh, that They dig us a three foot wide hole, three foot tall. We, we literally, we have room to get in there and move around and work. And, you know, every opportunity we get, we have two entrances and exits. Not always, but it does happen. So we try to do everything we can uh, to make it better. And, man, it's been working pretty good for us because we really hadn't had any problems. As you see, I just put a link up there to my TikTok. If you have not seen what we're doing on TikTok, you really do need to get over and check it out because 
tell you what, we've grown pretty fast in the last four or five months, and it's been crazy. Uh, if you heard me talk about it a while ago, David, we are looking at a tunnel that we have open now to see if we have opportunity to get over there and video them backfilling it. And Nuagra, Nuagira, hope I got that right, Saxon. What is the most challenging project you've worked on and how did you complete it? You know, normally the most challenging ones are when people want a toilet or, or plumbing in an area where there's nothing there. You've got to look at how deep is the system around? What can you do to get a sewer line from there out? And then what can you do to get water lines over there? So a lot of different things that you can look at. Cool thing about it, though, is, you know, pretty much in the neat thing about plumbing is if, if you really want to get it done, you can. You, plumbing is forgiving. You can just about do anything plumbing and make it work if you think about it the right way and go about it the right way. So anyway, the opportunity is phenomenal and it, it really can make it easy to do. Challenging. The good thing is nothing is impossible. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer. All right, next one. Matthew says, what do you think about gun control? I personally take a gun on my plumbing jobs. I uh, can't tell you how many times it's unclogged a drain. No, that's pretty funny. Uh, you know, I, I believe... We all have the right to bear arms. Alex Richard says, Roger, how are you applied for plumbing and trade school in Canada? Start in August. What should I expect in my first week or two of school? I'm also not that good in construction. Well, number one, you know, the good thing is, you know, none of us are. Or let me say this. None of us were when we started. Uh, the funny thing is, and I get asked that all the time. It's like, Roger, how do I get to be a plumber like you? I don't know anything. You know what? When I started, I didn't either. So the, the whole cool thing about it is that's what we go to school for. That's what we go learn for. Uh, no, not bot is not a real person. Uh, and if you keep spamming, it will kick you out. So in fact, we can make that really easy. That was easy. Uh, so the cool thing about it is you don't have to be good at it. You're going to learn it. And what I will tell you is if you start trade school in August, what you should expect is th they're going to teach you things. They're going to want you to learn things. That's what you're going to school for. You're going to have an opportunity that a lot of people just really don't have. So what I'll tell you is get in there and learn. And the most important thing I can tell you is try to be the best student you can be. Your goal when you go is to become the best student because then you want to become the best journeyman. Then you want to become the best foreman and superintendent. Why? You make more money. And I don't understand people that just go through the courses and training and they're like, yeah, I just want to, I just want to hang out. Man, you're going to school, go to be the very best. And if you can do that, if you can try to be the best, Remember, you're going to be competing with, you know, people in your class. You're either going to be working for them, they're going to be working for you, or you're going to be trying to get the same jobs pretty much for the rest of your career. So my thought is I would go ahead and learn everything that I could about how to be the best, study it. And, you know, those of y'all that watch me often know that I talk about getting up in the morning and studying my trade, new materials, new techniques, new tools. What can you learn to get better? And are you doing it often enough? Back over in the forum. Shevanov says, trades college telling me that renewables is the future. What does that mean for gas and heat engineers and plumbers? It, you know, I'm a lead AP. We're constantly looking at what can we do to make the world a better place? And you're right, renewables, man, man, that's what it's all about. But renewable energy, think about it. Can we, can we learn solar and tie that into plumbing? Can we learn to harvest wind power and tie that into plumbing? 
anything that we can do to help make things not reply on fossil fuels and things like that, it's going to make the world a better place. So yeah, it, it's going to mean that we start looking at water heaters that are made for solar and different things like that. And I think that whenever we start looking at it like that, it, it's going to help us all do better. Uh, sorry, I got to read some of these before I can post anything. Uh, this one here is from Zelucids. says, I've had issues with sediment within my house. I have replaced valves on your utility tub. And have them after six months have issues with closing completely. Recently replaced them with new quarter turn valves. Recently got a three stage filter. Three stage filter, you know, that's what I'm sitting here reading this and I'm thinking, I would definitely want a filter system, maybe more than one. If you're in here a while ago, whenever I was talking about my sister's house, they drink lake water and you've got a, a, a water storage tank, a cistern. You've got a, a pressure pump. You've got a big diaphragm valve to help keep pressure on the house. But then you've got three carbon filtration filters. You've got a UV filter uh, or UV sterilization. So, you know, there, there's so many different things that you can use. Man, I recommend using it, checking it, testing it. Continuously check your water quality, see what it's doing. Makes all the difference in the world. Uh, Magnum says, I've been doing rough ends for my company for two years now and have decided to take on stack outs. Any tips and suggestions? Number one, yeah, take on anything you can. Anything you can learn and grow is going to help you. The more education you get, the more knowledge you possess, the more value you are to your company, and, and therefore you're going to make more money. So absolutely, I think that is such a big deal. All right. Yes, if y'all have a question, click on the link there. Liz has got it set up where it's working, and I am in the forum answering questions right now. Trenton says, what would you recommend to get a glob of bar soap that is clogging a drain out to clear the drain? You know, I would probably start with trying to use hot water. What can you do to kind of help dilute it down? And I don't mean boiling water, anything like that, because if it's PVC pipe, it's not made for it. So I would look at how big of a glob is it and, and what drain are you talking? If you're talking a lavatory or a kitchen or something like that, take apart the P-trap. Take apart the plumbing and clean it up. If it's the bathtub, okay, you may end up having to pour enough hot water, maybe get a, a drain auger down there. Anything you can do to help break it up, clear it up, and get rid of it. Dylan says, do you know what top pipe is most likely to burst? I want to know in case I use the wrong top, not because I want to make anything crazy. You know, it, and look, all pipes will burst if, you know, they're, they're designed for different pressures. It depends on really what type system you're using it for, things like that. Uh, I really don't think that, Anything like that matters. The only thing is, what is in place? Are you replacing something? Or, you know, what does the AHJ, the authority having jurisdiction in your area, what do they recommend? We have got some wonky questions today. Magnum says, how could I be a better rough end plumber? Uh, spend more time doing it, spend more time practicing it, spend more time studying it. What can you do to speed up the process? What can you do to be more accurate at the process? What can you do to get your install quickly? The reason I was a good superintendent in the union, I got jobs done on time, under budget, and safely. And the big one there is under budget. What can you do to cut the budget? What can you do to get things done faster? And the reason I say that is labor is probably our biggest expense. It's the biggest risk in any job. 
because we know what the materials cost. We know what overhead is, but labor is the one that can kill us because we don't know how long it's going to take. And if you're not watching labor and you're, and you're not doing things right there, it can actually be a problem because that's where you get in trouble. If, if your people aren't out doing jobs in a timely manner, man, it's going to be big problems. So becoming a better rough hand plumber, practice at it and look at those three things. How can I get it done on time, under budget and safely without having any problems so nobody gets hurt? Jacob says, hey, Roger, I'm in high school senior that is graduating this year, looking at going into the plumbing trade. What would you recommend as a good way to get into the trade? First of all, Jacob, I, I tell you, you know, look, go take that free mini course that I talk about all the time. The reason being, it will help you figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. And I ask plumbers all the time about what to, what they want to do and how they want to do it. And man, it, it's, it's different for all of us. And what I mean by that is most of us don't even know or didn't know when we got into the trades, what kind of plumber we wanted to be. And I've asked so many plumbers that, and I know that to be true. We literally have, we're clueless. Uh, okay, I'm going to try something here real quick, guys, just because I got a message here. And I like this. Uh, there we go. Where is today? Sorry, guys, I'm trying to fix a problem here. There we go. Looky there. It is great having help like I've got. So, Amber, thank you so much. <clears throat> and let me see if that worked right there. And it does. Perfect. So we've got more questions and feedback and stuff like that. So that's wonderful. All right. I'm going to jump back over into the chat, into the live chat real quick. And... Francis Kozer, how you doing? Bleach slowly decomposes into chlorine gas, so it won't stick around. Uh, septic's bad, that's right. You can use that to help clean your septic system out a little bit, not too much. Kim Cam, what's the most common plumbing problem you run into? You know, really around here, it's normally a stopped up drain. I know that's funny, but I say funny, it's not funny, but you know, just a stopped up toilet. St clogged drains are the biggest problem because of what people put down in them. And it makes it kind of tough. Uh, yeah, Amber's right. It says, I, I like the backfill idea. Also, we use foundation companies and structural engineers to double check our work, not just double check it, to double check all of our work. Uh, should Joe Everest in the house? His point, how often should I check the washing machine drain line? You know, number one, if you're, if you're afraid that it'll come out, you want to check that often. Uh, we like to actually zip tie our drain line down into there. If you're worried about it overflowing, just kind of keep an eye on it. See if you can see any buildup in there where it's filled up and got wet, different things like that. And if y'all have not checked out Joe Everest's channel, he's got a great YouTube channel and all about building fences. It's amazing. And yes, Amber, I have. Thank you so much. So, you know, the, the cool thing is, I've oh, got another one there. All right, I am trying to find that right there. Perfect. So, you know, the, the cool thing is, and I'm going to jump back over into the, the form here and answer some more of these questions. But the cool thing is, if y'all hadn't checked out Joe's channel, you need to. He's got some cool stuff going over there. And a lot of what we talk about in here and I've got plumbers, electricians, roofers, HVAC techs, all kinds of different people that get in here and ask questions. So, you know, watching what he does to me is really neat. 
Next question. Jesse says, hi, I'm wanting to start my own plumbing company. Any advice? And should I do residential or commercial or both? Or where's the most money at right now? Most money's always going to be in residential service. Now, I'm, and I'm going to tell you why. Here, here's what my pros are for residential service. Number one, you're going to get paid probably that day. Meaning when your plumbers go out and do a job, normally they collect before they leave. So you're going to get paid that day. There's not a lot of overhead that you have to carry for a long time. Meaning on a commercial job, you may get paid net 30, net 60, net 90. That means you're going to be financing that job for 30, 60, or 90 days. So, you know, my thought is I would much rather literally have my money that day. I'm not all about the big payday, meaning I don't need to do a, a $10 million job and hopefully make 5 or 10% profit. And I'd just rather do the, the jobs that we're doing, get paid every day, and I don't have to worry about losing that much money. And it's really funny because a real good friend of mine put that to me that way one day because I asked him the same question a long time ago. And he said, never take on a job so big that if you lost that money, it would hurt you. And, and think about it. If you do a $10 million job, is it going to hurt you if you lose that money? All right, back into the forum. Jesse, that was a really good question. What are the best methods for documenting hours for journeyman and master's license? What actually counts? Jason, this is good because to document your hours, number one, is not really your responsibility. To document your hours, that is on your employer, meaning your employer should have a system in place that literally helps them document the hours. We use QuickBooks. I can literally give Julie any employee's name and she can go in and look at, you know, where they're at, how many hours they had this week, how many hours they had this month, how many they had this year, or how many hours they've had the entire time they've been with us. And why that's really cool is that, you know, we're constantly looking at our, our plumbers and our tradesmen where are they at in their process? Are they to a position that we need to look at filling out paperwork, turning it in, getting them ready to test? We want them in a position where they're making the most money possible. And in order to do that, we've got to make sure that we're keeping track of their hours and we know where they're at. We've got a couple that are getting ready to go do their tradesman or their utility installer, different things like that. So we keep an eye on their information very closely. We really want to know what's going on all the time. Good questions. Ricky Hernandez says, is plumbing easy to learn? And man, I got to tell you, it, it's easier than you think. And don't get me wrong. It's not easy, but, and it's, I was thinking about this just the other day because we're working on some courses. We're working on courses for how to get into the trades, how to get better at the trades, how to start your own company, how to use social media to grow your company. But the big thing that I kept going back to, and, and I've had people ask me this before, is plumbing hard to do? And I look at it like this. Look, we learn to tie our shoes. And we learn to tie our shoes in a way that they don't come untied. And we can replicate it every day. Meaning I tie my shoes pretty much the same way every day. And the cool thing about it is if I can learn to do that at such a young age, as an older person, don't you think that we can all learn how to install a piece of pipe? It, it all starts with little things. It's not like you're trying to learn the entire world of plumbing in one day. You're trying to learn the things you're working on. So if you get a job as a residential service company at a residential service company and that's what you're going to be doing. You want to learn, how do I install a water heater? How do I unclog a drain? And the neat thing about the apprenticeship and the way that it's set up, you're going to ride around with a journeyman plumber for at least a couple of years. So you're going to have all these opportunities to learn. And I like it when my plumbers literally 
teach by showing them, then teach by doing it with them, then teach by letting them do it. And man, it works. Plumbing is not real hard to learn. And with all the opportunities out there, I mean, think about it. Y'all got social media these days. You've got books that that we didn't even have or we didn't know we had because we had to go to the library to find them. And that really probably didn't happen very often. Uh, man, it just lost me on my deal. So, you know, y'all have an opportunity that that literally we just did not have. And... I look at the world today, just look at the videos that that we do. You've got an opportunity here to watch those videos and see how I do a two-way clean out, how I do a sewer water test, how I run a camera, how I do so many things that literally I didn't even know about. And I wouldn't have known unless I worked with some good journeymen to teach me. So what I'll tell you, yeah, it really is easy to learn if you want to learn it. but the, the other big thing that I'll tell you is you've got to want to learn. And what I mean by that is, you know, don't ask the same question over and over again. If you ask something, think about it, write it down, learn it, study it, whatever it takes. Don't just ask the same question over and over again. Try to learn. What is the most common plumbing problem you run into? Yeah, we've talked about that. Stopped up drains is probably the most common water heaters uh water heaters is a, is another really big one because you know th there's so many water heaters in the Dallas area and you've got to think about it with what probably 5 million people in the the DFW metroplex water heaters are only good for say 8 to 10 years max and, and do the math every 8 to 10 years how many water heaters get changed out in this area so the numbers are big. You just got to look at it and figure out how to be the plumber that gets the call for that. And that's why we do marketing and social media the way we do. Jigen Kern says, do you know anything about plumbing and the sewage systems in Germany? You know, and I don't. Uh, we did a video today about plumbing in Italy. Uh, we've done plumbing in France. We've done plumbing in Russia. We, we've done a lot of different ones. We have not done Germany, and I, it would be really neat. I would like to, you know, look at some video, talk to some plumbers in Germany. We're, we're, we're looking at changing some things up where we interview and bring people in for different things. So that's one that we could possibly get into that could actually really be pretty cool. So next question in the forum, and yes, guys, we are in the forum asking questions. We've got a lot of them. David says, is it okay to put bleach on my toilet? I wouldn't get carried away with it, but yes. Fong says, hey, Roger, after video inspection, I found tr a tree root in my concrete sewer. Short of replacing it, what can I do to temporarily fix this problem? Fong, you, you have an opportunity to possibly do a spot repair. And what I mean by that is, if they ran a camera in and saw the root, number one, did they take a sewer machine and, and clean it out so you can use your toilet and whatnot? If you can get a sewer machine or a hydro jetter in there to literally bust up the root, get it cleared out, get it out of there. Now, if you can use a camera and a locator and figure out exactly where it's coming from, now what you can do, make a spot repair, meaning We've got equipment these days where literally we can stand directly above a camera and know right where it is. So if you know where that pipe is, you can mark out an area, figure out how deep it is, dig down, and repair it. I mean, there's a crack, there's a hole, there's something in there, those roots are getting in. What's it going to take to fix it? And, and to me, that's the way that I would look at it. And, and that may not be a, a temporary fix. That could possibly be a permanent fix. Harris Fischenbach says, quick question. Do you have any thoughts on third world countries? You know what? I hope their plumbing gets better. Klein Sonye says, what other trades would you suggest? Uh, 
preferably to a broke, unemployed, recently dropped out college student. And this is a good one because any of the trades are going to be good. Plumbing and electrical, HVAC, those are easy to get in. Meaning, especially if you've got some college background and you can come in and, and, and speak about why you want to be a good plumber, why you want to be a good electrician, whatever it is you're wanting to do. If you will come in and do stuff like that, I mean, you can get a good job. You can get a job where you can make, uh, I'm working on a video right now, but basically where you can make about 15 to 20 bucks an hour starting out. And think about what a job like that could do for, you know, somebody in college that, that is tired of college or wants to get out and, and do something different. I think the opportunities in front of us are bigger than we see. And man, any one of those trades could be good to get into, easy to get into, and you can make good money starting out. David says, uh, thanks for the respond. Looking forward to the video this week. Uh, did exactly what you said and made two exits. Tunnel's 44 feet long. One direction, replacing cracked cast iron. It's fun. Uh, life's like toilet paper, either always on a roll or taking crap off somebody. Yep, you're pretty much right. Uh, you know, what, what I would tell you is... And the, the compaction is the best part, but that's why we use structural engineers. That's why we do a lot of the things that we do is we want to make sure it's right every time. And we have the structural engineers come in and look at it before we start putting the dirt back. We send them pictures of the drawings where we draw it out. We have them look at how much dirt the dig crew hauls away. We want to make sure that it gets packed in tight and good and we don't have any problems. Uh, all right, man, this question is way too long. So what I'm going to tell you, Kira Yoshikage is 33 years old, houses in the northwest section of Mario, where, man, this is way too long for me to try to read all this. Uh, I will try to go through this later and send you an email back. Uh, it's just, I don't have time to, to read a, a question that long on here. It kind of slows the whole thing down. Joey says, how do you keep that mustache so pristine, man? It, it's, it's, um, luckily I was just born with a perfect mustache. John says, is commercial hard, is commercial plumbing harder than residential and does it pay more? Uh, here's what I want to tell you. It, it doesn't necessarily pay more. As a matter of fact, it can actually pay less because I know residential service plumbers that make over $200,000 a year. And they're good communicators. They're good salesmen. They're good at explaining the value of what it is they sell. And I really don't think that they're bad people. And, and please don't get me wrong because I don't. But I think in the residential service industry, you've got more opportunity to make more money. And look, I, I've met plumbers in the past month that have sold almost $2 million worth of plumbing in a year and they get paid good percentages. So there, there's different things and different ways that you can do. But at the end of the day, what do you want to do? Because it really doesn't matter which one pays the most. It matters which one you're going to enjoy the most. Because if you hate service plumbing and don't become a service plumber. If you hate commercial work, don't get a commercial job, get, get a residential job. You know, you've got to look at what's going to be the best for you. Cause if you can do what's best for you, then you can figure out how to make more money. And to me, that's what it's all about. Uh, jumping over into the chat real quick. Just trying to see. Steve Harlow is back. Back to driving for me. Good to have you in here, brother. I'm trying to see what kind of problem he had. Well, I drove all the way to Waikiki as soon as he get there. Text to say, go ahead and cancel. No need. Man, yeah, we get that often too. You know, what we ought to start doing as plumbers is literally our service call. We got to start billing for it up front. Say, hey, look, we just need to go ahead and collect that now. 
Uh, and that may be a good idea. That way, the people that are serious about it, they're going to pay you anyway. They're going to be like, look, man, yeah, just hurry up and get here. We want it done. Uh, don't know that that's going to happen, but man, it might be a good idea. At least that way you've got a credit card on file. You know, it went through different things like that. Steve brother, I hate to hear that. I really do. It, uh, it's not fun. All right. Sam Ham, how are we doing? You ever get frustrated with shady competitors, not doing things to code standards or to your standards? What do you do when a customer says, well, I got a price from your competitor, but you know they're not quoting the same thing. I ask them to compare. And Sam, that's really good because I ask them, look, you know, it, because we have a guarantee that, you know, you can't get what we do done for the same price. And it's really easy to, to represent that and to support that because most of the plumbers around us, they don't do things. And, and I'm going to say as well as we do, but maybe they don't use stainless steel supports and rods and nuts and washers. Maybe they don't use an engineer to double check the tunnel. Maybe they don't use dig crews to make sure it's done safe. Maybe they don't get it permitted and inspected. There's so many different things that they don't do. And all I do is I compare the estimates and say, well, look, there's a whole lot of things here they left out. I don't know if they're doing it or not. So it would be very easy for them to be able to have a lower price. And, you know, another one, and this goes back to a sign that I used to read on the way to school in high school, and it was at a cleaner's. And it was one of those marquee signs where they can change the letters. And they used to put up a different one every week. And it was so fun to watch. And I used to love just riding by there, reading it on the way to school. And I still remember the sign. And I mean, look, guys, I, I've been out of school for over 40 years. Uh, actually, almost 40 years. Yeah, almost 40 years. They had a sign up, and, and I still remember it to this day. It says, our competitors may be cheaper than we are. Only they know the true value of the work they sell. And man, that is just such a good way to think about it. Look, I'm not the cheapest plumber in town, and, and I say that all the time. I've always wanted to be the best. I've never wanted to be the cheapest. And whatever I have to do to try to sell that value as the best plumber, that's what we need to be doing. That's what we need to be teaching our plumbers. And I think that when we do that, the better we get at it the better it makes all of us. Creedence says, mom's trying to get the dryer lint out of the pipe from the outside of our house. Do you know an easy way to do it? And a wet vac works really good. I uh, don't know if you've got one or not, but a wet vac is a good way to create a suction to help pull a lot of that out. Man, there's just not a lot of good ways to do it, but that's one that I found out that works. Jesse says, what type of industrial snake should I buy to snake out a four-inch waistline that's clogged up, or should I use a jetter? Um, I got to tell you, th th there's, there's so many different brands out there of you know, sewer machines, of, of hydro jets, of things like that, and I'm still playing with them. I'm still learning. We had Milwaukee come in what, last week and do a product knowledge on a new sewer video camera they have. I love it. Uh, there, there's always somebody coming out with something. So what I would tell you, or, and you say industrial, so I don't know how big a job it is. You, you're talking about a four inch line. And I would want a big heavy duty sewer machine or a big heavy duty hydro jetter. Uh, a little cheap one's not going to do you any good. Don't waste your time with it. One thing you may be able to do is find a rental place that'll rent a big one. That may be what can, can help you more than anything. All right. Paul B says, I was watching your recent video and was wondering, how do you guys get under the house? Is there like a machine you guys use or something to get all that dirt out? You know, Paul, and this is a good question because we've got dig crews. We've got guys that go over there. Now, don't get me wrong. They have the right tools for it. They're set up for it. My guys, and man, it would take me and my guys three weeks to dig that job. They've literally got chipping hammers that have a special blade on it for digging. Uh, they're set up that where they, they literally 
dig it, bucket it, haul it out, dig it, bucket, haul it out. And, and then they turn the whole process around going back in. That way everything is packed tightly. And then they've got the, the chip and hammers with a flat head on it to help pack it in. So it, it's pretty cool. Here you go. Ed, the last tribe says, I like Roger. Uh, I believe it could be a good news reporter, plumbing disasters and kitchen nightmares. Uh, you know, call Hollywood, tell them, look, we found a guy that would be phenomenal. Uh, man, I'd look forward to that, Ed. It'd be fun to do. Uh, lost my mouse. There it is. Back over in the forum, Adrian Leva says, just acquiring your C36 in California, starting from scratch, what's your greatest suggestion? Number one, try to be the very best you can be. And I know that sounds crazy, but if you'll take that philosophy to try to be the very best, whether you're getting into the trades, starting out as an apprentice, starting out as a journeyman, starting your own company, starting to use social media to grow your company, always try to be the very best. And I can't tell you how big that is. And it's, it's, by, it's in a book that I read by Seth, Seth Godin. And it, it is literally, why wouldn't you try to be the very best? And I know a lot of plumbers and, and have known a lot over the years that literally they just wanted to show up every day and get a paycheck. But the bad thing is when it was time to lay people off, they got laid off. If you're constantly trying to be the best, it doesn't take any more work. Uh, you learn to work smarter, not harder. And the cool thing about it is it literally, it, it works. If, if you will, if you will continuously look at what you can do to get better, study the new tips, new tricks, new materials, new techniques, new tools, what can you learn to get better? And it's huge. Milwaukee backpack drain machines makes it for a clean exit when you're done, man. And I'll tell you what, th those backpack machines are really pretty cool. The cameras that they came over and, and demoed, the small one is a backpack. The bigger one's a not. I, I really want the bigger one as a backpack because I like the fact that, you know, when we get up on the roof and run a camera down, I literally like going all the way through to the city tap. And if I can do that, it, it literally, it makes my job easier because I can run it to where I want it. I can pause it. I can locate it. What I like about the Milwaukee camera too is that when you do line tracing, it'll trace out the entire line. So man, it's and it's just a pretty cool system. I gotta tell you, I really thought that was cool. Next over in the forum. Jorge Garcia says, Hello, I'm an apprentice in Michigan. If I get licensed in Michigan, how would it go about getting my license in Texas if I were to move there? Number one, if you're, if you're wanting to move here and work for another company, contact the Texas State Board. Once you get your license, you can get a provisional license in Texas for six months. And once you get that provisional license, now what it's all about is getting down here, learning the code, learning how we do things, getting ready, because within that six months, you're going to go down to the State Board of Plumbing Examiners in Austin. You're going to take your test and then you're going to get your regular license. So the cool thing about it is you can get your license in Michigan, show the state of Texas, you've got your hours, you've got your license, you've got everything documented. And then whenever you're ready to move to Texas, man, it's easier to do. You've got your license. You just come down here and get a job. My question to you is, Jorge, do you do residential or commercial service or new construction, union or non-union? It, it may be easier to get here than you think, but that's why I ask. Always just trying to see how I can help you. Genton Silva says, trying to turn off a water line, but there's some sort of converter in the middle of two shutoff valves. What do I do? Uh, the converter is probably not a converter. It's probably a bypass. Uh, I'd really need to see like a picture of it to figure out. Maybe you just need to turn off both valves. I don't know. 
Uh, what I would do is say, take a picture of it, post it in our subreddit. And I got a link right here to it, post it in our subreddit. And what that will do is that'll get Sean strong on it. It'll get me on it. Get other people in there that'll look at it and say, Hey, here's what you do. Our subreddit isn't just pictures and, and videos of, of plumbing. Uh, although that's the biggest part of it, but there's a good community there. And if you get in there and ask questions, normally people will help you out with out just talking about, about you. Paul says, does the UA local 100 do residential plumbing? Uh, you know, it's really funny. I used to be a member as my company. So yes, they used to. Now they don't. Uh, and, and I say that because, you know, when I signed up with local 100, they kept promising me they were going to do residential service training. They were going to teach residential service. I mean, so many different things. The bad thing is, uh, they didn't do any of it. And I've been with them for five years. The answer, the answer to be easy is no, they, they don't teach it. They don't train it. They don't show anybody how to do it. And, and that's why I ended up getting out of the union for Texas green plumbing. Sean O says, dang, I missed, did I miss the live? No, we're still live brother. Uh, I have to DIY a small house for myself. The small house will be part of a bigger house in the end. It's for my family for the next hundred years. Should I aim to complete it all in soldered copper? I got to tell you, I like I love copper. Uh, I'm an old school plumber. I think copper is great, but I'm also smart enough to look at the the new things coming out. Remember, I told you I study new tools, techniques, materials every day. And I love the fact that Upanor, man, I think it's going to be around forever. Uh, I like it. I think as long as you buy good product in the beginning, you got to make sure that the manufacturer or supply house hasn't left it lay it out in the yard or anything like that. If it's delivered on the truck, did they have it in the back of a truck in direct sunlight for a long time? I like copper because you don't have to worry about things like that. But I will tell you, it, it's possible you could run into some problems both ways. All I say, man, is, and, and there's a lot of people that, that say PEX is generally better choice, uh, but copper when needed. And, and, and Francis, I, I'll tell you, I, I like both ways. I do like the Upanor system. I think it's fantastic. So different ways to look at it. And Jorge says, uh, man, did I get it right? I jumped off of it. There we go. You do both and non-union. Uh, then my question for you would be, what part of Texas are you wanting to move to? We're always looking for plumbers here. Uh, I want to jump down here and say hello to my brother. Oh, he disappeared. There he goes. I'll get back to this one. Paul Peck, if y'all aren't familiar with Paul Peck, Paul Peck is a drywall installer. And, man, I watch him on YouTube because I like the way he works. I like the way he does things. If you know, plumbing, electrical, HVAC is not a trade you want to get into. Jump over and check out Paul Peck drywall tube. Fantastic stuff. And man, he's good. Uh, Tyler says, hey, Roger, what's the best way to deal with old brass pipe? My buddy was on a job where he was trying to get an angle stop off. Piece pipe cracked on him and when it was old brass. And at that point, you got to get like a nipple extractor in there to get it out. Do whatever you have to. Check the threads. You may have to open the wall. I've had to do that before with galvanized pipe. And, and I'll tell you what, it's not fun, but sometimes it, it, it's definitely what we have to do. Matt Reisinger did his whole house with copper and pro press. Absolutely. And he probably had all that donated. So that helps. Uh, Sean says, thanks, Roger. Very cool. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, Al One Shot says, how much do plumbers make? Plumbers can make, you know, it, it, just getting in the trade starting out, 15 to 20 bucks an hour. On the high end, a plumber can literally make anywhere from 100 to uh, two or $300,000 a year, depending on 
sales, how busy he wants to be, how much overtime he wants to work. There's a lot of different things involved. Yeah, Francis put it in there too, I agree. Uh, so anyway, there's a lot of different options and opportunities, but plumbers can make pretty much whatever they want to make. So think about that when you're looking for a job, what kind of plumbing company do you want to work for? What do they do? What opportunities are you going to have? And how's it going to help you? What is the main purpose for vent lines, whether it's from cast iron or PVC? Great question. You know, vent lines are made to keep the balance on the atmospheric pressure, meaning sewer gas doesn't come up into your house. It'll actually go out the roof. But also, as long as you've got that vent pipe and it's open, it's not going to make it suck that trap dry. So, man, vent pipes are, are really a very beneficial thing to have and a good thing. So it's something you definitely don't want to skip on. Ed, the last tribe says USA plumbing, it's different from the UK or similar. Uh, you know what? It's all got to be similar. I mean, water runs downhill. And, you know, a lot of the fixtures are the same. A lot of y'all's faucets look like ours. Valves look like ours. But there are some differences. We just did a video today about plumbing in Italy. So, you know, I know that it doesn't always just happen to look the same and, and function different. There's a lot of things similar. There's a lot of things different. I'd really love to get over there and do a video, see a house being built, see a commercial building being built, something like that. So I'm looking forward to it. This is a good question. Garrett Wisdom says, when you have a tough day at work one day, what was the best way to make tomorrow better? And I really do like this, Garrett, and, and, and thanks for asking that, because to me, here's the thing. No matter what business you're in, no matter what trade you're in, no matter what skill set you have, we all have bad days. And what I'll tell you is, is, look, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you've got the opportunity to make it as good a day as you want. And I know that sounds funny, but man, just because yesterday was bad doesn't mean today's got to be. Just because today's bad doesn't mean tomorrow's got to be. The opportunity, and, and to be honest, it's all a mindset. If you get it in your mind that you're going to feel sick today, chances are you, you can probably make yourself throw up. And I know that's crazy, but if you tell yourself, man, this is an amazing day. I'm so lucky to be here, so happy to be here. Life is fantastic, yada, yada, yada. And you can literally make that happen. And we all get in our own mind. Mindset's just an attitude. And if you let other people affect you, it can make you have bad days. And y'all, you know, my thing, and I don't mean it bad, but I just really don't give a dang what most people think. I have fun most of the time. I'm happy most days. Don't get me wrong. I, I get bad news and have bad days just like everybody else. But I can also step back and look at the mirror and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have a bad day and change the way I look at it. So Garrett, that is, man, that is a good question. I really do appreciate that. Uh, I like it. Uh, okay, already answered that one. Michael says, what is easier, new construction or remodel? And, and this is another good question because it really depends on what you enjoy. And I mean, think about it because, you know, as a plumber, are you doing what you want to do? And, and that's why I always recommend that free mini course to people. It's because that there's a lot of people that don't understand. It's up to them that, that their, their entire life is up to them. How they do things is up to them. But take that mini course and figure out what kind of plumber you think you want to be. Then go after that job. Do you want to do service? Do you want to do construction? Do you want to do commercial? Do you want to do residential? Do you want to be union? Do you want to be non-union? There's so many different opportunities out there, and it's entirely up to you. But you've got to figure it out. Now, I'm proud of the fact that I've done residential and commercial. I've done service and new construction. I've been union and non-union, and, and, and now I'm or I've been non-union, union, and now I'm non-union again. 
you know, the, the cool thing is though, those are decisions for me to make. And, and luckily I, I think I've made good decisions and, and done what I want to do. Okay. So Jorge says families in San Antonio, however, you're comfortable with moving to any of the big cities. You know, and the reason I ask it is look, we're, we're always looking for residential service companies or residential service plumbers here in North Texas. Uh, I've got a guy actually moving up here from Houston next month to go to work for me. Man, we are happy to have him. We're excited about what we think he brings to the table. So it really is pretty cool. And I like this. Uh, I don't know if I can find it over here. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go right there. Tyler C says, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. And man, that that's it. Uh, we, we all have opportunities to do whatever we want to do and however we want to do it. But man, it, it's always up to us. E even if I have a bad day, it's all how I react to it. It's all how I let it affect me. You know, actually today got, got bad news, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, you know what? We'll, we'll adapt and overcome. It's not going to hurt us. It's not going to kill us. We still have opportunities to do what we want to do. So I can sit and be grumpy and pissed off all day long about it. Or I can say, Hey, you know what? It is what it is. Let's do this and let's make it better and have fun with it. So I'm going to try to jump right back in here again. Try this one more time. Okay, so if I click on this one here, let's see what happens. There we go. Uh, okay, so I've already answered that one. I'm actually over into the chat again for today, over into the Kajabi form. So I just want to jump through here and see if there's any of these that I have not answered yet that were, that were asked and see what I can come up with. Uh, looking for any new questions here. And if y'all got any questions you want answered, uh, Ed, the last tribe says, I have a good question. We all love plumbing. Does anyone know where the plumber word is coming from? Yeah, Ed, uh, it, it basically means lead. The, you know, when originally plumbers, the, the pipes were built out after wood, they went to lead. But that that's pretty much what it is. It's, you know, what is it that we work with? And you know, plumber is like poorer of lead, worker of lead, something like that. So it's really kind of pretty cool. I want to see here. Okay, I already answered that one. I am over in the forum looking at questions, guys. I think that I've literally gone through and answered all of them, but I'm actually over in the old comments uh, over on the Kajabi forum. <clears throat> Just to see what kind of questions we got here. See what the submission is here. Bill says, says he's an a IT professional with a DIY minor. I love that. All right. Joe Martin, trying to pull yours up right here while it circulates. Says, uh, is plumbing hard to learn as in repairs, installations, and so on? Once I finish my college degree, I want to pursue the trades. I'll tell you what, and I was asked this question earlier, so I will tell you this. I don't think plumbing is that hard to learn. Uh, I really think that the, the thing is, is it's repetition. And, you know, you say you're going to college, so, so think about it like this. Say you've got biology and you're dissecting a frog. Well, once you get in there and you figure out where the heart is and how to remove it, you go back the next day and you do it again or you do it a week later. Then 
a week or two later, you do it again. The thing is you do it and you learn through repetition. Now you can't just jump in the first time and open him up and assume, you know, where everything is and how to remove it and how to put it back and how to slow him up. And, you know, I know some of y'all are thinking, okay, Roger, that's probably not a very good analogy, but it's like I mentioned earlier, you know, at a very young age, we learned to tie our shoes and we, we learned and we got to where we could do it every day over and over again. Plumbing is about the same. You're not trying to do a lot of different things. You're trying to do the same thing over and over again. And it makes all the difference in the world. But I go back to one of the big things that I always say is try to be the very best. If you're going to learn this trade as an apprentice, as a journeyman, whatever it is you're wanting to be, try to be the very best. Mr. Jeff Eatley in the house, how we doing, brother, says, do you know of a small sewage plant for a shop for one toilet and sink? Dad wants to put one in for the shop. You know, my question is, you know, where you're located, can you put in like a septic system out there? Uh, maybe a tank that, you know, you could possibly flush out every now and then, get a sewer ejector pump, maybe pump it over to the main house to where the plumbing is there. Lots of different opportunities. Uh, what I would say, brother, is give me a call. Uh, we'll talk about what you got, what it looks like, where you're at, and go there. Uh, and this is a good one. I, I like this. Sam Ham says, Roger, you should do a tour of an airplane plumbing system. I've got opportunities just because of, you know, contacts I've made and people I'm reaching out with. I, I literally want to do videos like that. How is this plumbed? I've tried reaching out to the local jail here in my city uh, to see if I could do a video about the plumbing inside the jail, what that would be like. I've also tried reaching out. You know, I did the plumbing on the water park at Great Wolf Lodge. And I got to tell you, it's actually a pretty cool installation. And one of my favorite things about it is the fact that there's three mechanical rooms up under the towers and the wave pool and the outdoor pool. And I just think it would be so cool to actually get in there and do a video about the plumbing in there. I have a friend that owns a medical marijuana grow facility in Oklahoma. He's given me permission to go in there and video the plumbing system there. So, man, it's pretty cool opportunity, and we're, and we're definitely looking forward to trying something like that. Uh, Plumber Man says, greeting, hope your stream goes good. i tell you what, so, so far it hadn't gone too bad, so we're trying to do, we're always trying to do better. Uh, you apply to be a civil contractor, get a security clearance, all federal civil contracts are available to the public. Uh, please do a difference in the UK and US plumbing and gas because I've been doing it for eight years in the UK. Want to see regs and stuff that are different. Uh, Karen, that's pretty good. I, I, I like that idea. I need to uh, I need to contact some plumbers in the UK and and see what we can do about possibly doing a collab, working on something together. And James Brown, yes, I remember old lead Nocum. Uh, one of the very first jobs that I worked on, I think I did a 12 inch cast iron lead nocum joint on a vertical rise. So it was actually pretty cool. And I mean, I, I don't dip, I don't chew, I don't do anything anymore. Uh, Gary says, Hey Roger, thank you for reading my question. I really appreciate it. Also. Thank you for making great videos for me to watch. I'm a plumber right now in Springfield, Missouri, and I love my job as a plumber. Garrett, I don't know if he's still in here or not, uh, but you saw Joe Everest in here a while ago. He's a fence builder also in Springfield, Missouri. Great guy. Uh, definitely worth checking out what he's doing on YouTube. Don't get me wrong. It's not plumbing, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, I like this. Uh, Roger, if there is a good book you can recommend that will help plumbers study their codes. 
Absolutely. Um, here's the thing. I, I like the UPC study guide. They've got a, an illustrated guide, but they've also got the UPC study guide, which is a great question and answer book. I've got videos on it, how to use it, how I use it to study. And I got to tell you, uh, it's pretty good. Red mine when he's replying to someone else. And you know what, man, I do. I bounce back and forth between the forums, the chats and questions. So I try. Uh, Jeff, I hope I answered your question, question good enough for you while ago. Get with me and uh, I'll be able to help you and your dad. Sam says, yep, working on that one, brother. We're looking at doing the water park. Uh, would love to do an airplane. Would love to do a city jail. Any ideas y'all have got for video, stuff like that? Tell me what you'd like for us to make because we're constantly looking at what we can do to make things better. Now, I want to tell you too. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a link in here. I'm gonna try to. Actually, the way I type, y'all probably don't want me to. Uh, see if I can do this real quick. All right, so I just put a link in here and it's to the Trades Academy. And you know, y'all heard me earlier talking about courses and things like that. So I want to tell you a little bit about it. So right now, what we're really excited to tell you about helping you get into the trades as efficiently as possible. So, you know, we're creating courses to help people get into the trades. As you see, I've got a lot of people in high school, a lot of people in college that want to get in the trades. So this will not be college level cost. Trust me. Uh, we're making this affordable. We've got four different levels to come in, but the lowest one getting into the trades is extremely affordable and uh, it will be valuable. So if you'd like to enter to get free access, leave us some feedback on what you've liked, learned or accomplished from these trade talks videos. So whenever I'm talking on, and teaching plumbing, how to get in the trades, how to become a better trades, how to use social media. What are you learning? Is it good for you? Do you learn anything from watching my YouTube videos? Does it help you learn the trade of plumbing? Uh, so we're going to pick at least one person from each week's entries to win the program for free when it launches. And we're getting ready to launch this within about a month. So this is something we're really excited about. Uh, Whenever we do that, it's going to be fantastic. Now, we are only picking the winners from those that provide feedback. So if you asked a question, head over to this site and provide feedback and get your entry in. These will go a long way in helping us grow the trades tribe. So if you've got, if you've learned something and you're interested in learning more, and what I mean is if you've learned something watching these videos, if you've asked questions and I've given you value and helped you, if I've pointed you to a video and helped you find something out, do me a favor, go over to the tradesacademy.com slash feedback and enter in there. And it'll ask you some questions. What kind of things do you want to learn? What, what is it? What is it that would help you the most? But do me a favor, go over there and give me some feedback and we will find a way or not find a way. We're already working on it. We're going to be doing a drawing each week for people that enter each week. We've got their information just so we can do it for a drawing. But I'm telling you, uh, man, we're putting together something really cool. We've been working on it for about a month. And about a month from now, actually less than a month from now is when it's going up. So the opportunity here is pretty cool. So if there's something in here you've liked, you've learned, and I've helped you, please go over and give us some feedback and let me know. Uh, Joe Mama is not very smart. Henry Revel says, how did you originally get into plumbing? And, and this is a good one because this is one that I'm actually asked quite often. Uh, what I will tell you is I actually got into plumbing because of a friend of mine. I was literally, I was managing a restaurant at the age of 16. And the cool thing about it is late one night, <laughs> him and I were talking, it was slow. And he says, look, are you going to do this forever? And I'm like, you know what? I may not be doing it forever, but 
right now, man, I'm 16 years old. I'm managing a restaurant. Life is great. He says, so what are you going to do when you get fired or quit? Who's going to hire a 16-year-old restaurant manager? And I got to tell you, it was probably a few weeks later uh, that I either quit or got fired. But here's the thing. I had talked to him that night about his three older brothers and his dad who were plumbers. And he talked about how much they loved it and the cool things about it. And, and one big thing, remember, this is 1980. He's talking about robots will never be able to do plumbing. And it's just one of those things that kind of stuck. So what I will tell you is I got into it because right after that, a few weeks later after I quit or got fired, I ended up calling one of his brothers, asking him to help me get a job, and he did. And I got into plumbing, and, man, I just I fell in love with it. So, you know, we all have different stories about how we got into it. But at the end of the day, plumbing is such an amazing career. And I think anybody that wants to do good in their life, this is really a good way to do it. Plumbing or electrical, HVAC, it doesn't matter. The, the trades, and you get out, you use your hands, you work, you learn, and, and you, you have great opportunities ahead of you. EJ Seitz says, what are your thoughts on flushable wipes? And if you're making fun of me, go ahead. Uh, you know, I, re I recommend the Kleenex Cottonelle flushable or the Cottonelle flushable wipes. I say Kleenex. The, the Cottonelle flushable wipes, and, and look, I've done a test. And, and I'll tell y'all what, if y'all want to do a test and video it and post that video on my subreddit and, and the link's right there in front of you, if you'll do that, here's what I'll do. I, I'll end up taking plumbers videos and showing because I don't want to be the only one testing this. And what I mean by that is I took two solo cups. I put the Cottonelle flushable wipes in one. I put regular baby wipes in the other one. And an hour later, tried to pull them apart. The Cottonelle flushable wipes pulled right apart. The baby wipes, man, they didn't. I mean, literally, you, you've got to pull to pull it apart. And think about that getting caught up in your sewer system, it's not going to eventually tear away. Those plastic fibers binding that stick in there and, and, and help hold it together. So then I did another test where I left them overnight and did the same thing. So that's my thought on flushable wipes. And here's the deal. And, and Sean will tell you, look, I, I pulled some out of a, uh, a sewer just recently. Look, if they've got a bad sewer line, the inside, and, and y'all saw the video I did Friday, look at the inside of that pipe. If you hadn't seen it, go look at that video where we do the tunnel repairs, the video we put up Friday. The inside of that pipe is rough, like sandpaper, even worse. And even toilet paper is going to get clogged up on that. So if you're going to recommend something, recommend something that is going to eventually dissolve. So that's why I like the Cottonelle flushable wipes. And man, uh, I hope that helps you. Here's the thing. People are going to use them. No matter what, people are going to use wipes. Why not recommend one that you've tested yourself and you can tell them, look, I know these work. Uh, I've, I've, I've used them. I've tested them. I, I know that they will dissolve. I know they come apart a lot easier. I know they use plastic or I know they use paper binding fibers, not plastic. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it and make it work. I got a few more here in the forum, then I'll jump back over in the chat. Uh, Sean Sam says, do a video of a high rise. I learned that they had to change the code in New York City when they built the Empire State Building because the vents were undersized and the stuff someone flushed from the 95th floor came out of the toilets in the 50th floor. You know, I don't know that the vents will do that, that maybe the undersizing of the sewer line. So is it possible that they could undersize it and it could create problems like that? Absolutely. Now, does that mean that it did happen or does happen? I don't know. Vents, I don't know that would, would cause that. They may cause it to go down and, and suck things back through it, but normally not blow it out. But man, anything is possible. But there's a lot of people that don't think events are that important. But I got to tell you, it really can make a big difference. 
All right. Israel says, hey, Roger, I had a quick question for spot repairs on galvanized lines that are buried and rusted. I was wondering what the best way to tie into something like that is that will last a lot longer than a repair coupling. You know, Israel, here's what I'll tell you is, number one, I don't want to do a spot repair on a galvanized line underground. I can't guarantee that's going to work. I can't guarantee it's going to hold. And once I tighten up, say I use a compression coupling or something, once I tighten it up, I cannot guarantee that, that that's not going to start leaking or right down from it. If you tighten it down too much, is it going to start cracking that pipe? So, man, I would do a complete replacement or a relay and, and just make that go away. That's not anything that I would want to do. Bubba says, why is my bill so high when I barely use water? Uh, you know, Bubba, I would tell you to go in and check your bill, check your meter, watch it and, and see, you know, what is going on. Uh, are you using more water? Did you turn your irrigation system on? Are they just overcharging you? What's going on? And, you know, what can you do to fix it? I'm going to jump back over into the chat for just a minute. Uh, Austin says, is it safe to use chemical drain cleaners? Actually, uh, Augustine, to, to me, it's not. And, and I say that because these are either acidic or caustic or things like that. But they're not good. They're not good for the system. They're not good for the plumber that has to come work on it later. It's not good to put these chemicals in our water so they end up in our drinking system. Uh, I just, I don't think that, I don't think chemical drain cleaners are. I'd rather use a hydro jetter, sewer machine, something like that, and, and see how I can make that work. Callie says, I got yelled at by an Excel Energy guy that a plumber can do gas lines. He was terrible, but was he right? Uh, Callie, what part of the world are you in? And I ask because here in Texas, plumbers do natural gas. Uh, and if you're a plumber around the country, put in here, do you do natural gas? Meaning, can you install it? Can you work on it? Can you repair it? Because, you know, here in Texas, plumbers, it's part of our job. We install it in the buildings. We do relays. We do everything from the meter to the outlet. So, man, uh, and I think I said, Carrie, Callie, that, that's a very good question. Isaac, I started plumbing in 1980 at the age of 16. Uh, suds pressure zone. You know, suds pressure zone, if you're talking about the blowout, that, that's possible. Normally, you don't have a lot of suds in a commercial building, though, so I'm not sure. <clears throat> Yo, Tom, my boy says your toilet just exploded like in a week ago. Sorry about your bad luck. Uh, I hate when toilets explode. Don't know why it did it, but crazy. Jim says, push the wrong button, but that will have to do. Appreciate the feedback. Not sure what button you're talking about, Jim, unless you're one of these. I do have some more questions here. <clears throat> Kelly says, yeah, I got yelled at. Uh, by the way, Excel guy was awful. Be nice to your customers. Am I right? You know, yes. Customer service is, is one thing that can set any plumber and plumbing company apart. And at any level, I mean, think about it. If you're on a commercial job, you still have a customer. Your customer is the general contractor. What are you doing to make his life better? What are you doing to make his job better? Are you honest with him? Do you treat him the way you would want to be treated? So, man, yeah, you definitely want to take care of your customers no matter what level they're on. Uh Okay, David says, can I drain my water heater after five years with no maintenance? I wouldn't. Uh, I really don't like the idea of draining a water heater that, that hadn't been draining that long. You may have calcium and magnesium buildup in there that's actually keeping it from leaking. So, man, I really try not to. All right, John says, just graduated from an eight-month college plumbing program kind of like a pre-apprenticeship type of thing. I really enjoyed it and loved plumbing, but I had a lot of difficulty in my drafting class. Should I let that stop me from pursuing plumbing? I've just never been good at drawing. You know, number one, John, most plumbers aren't good at drawing. That's why we're plumbers. Uh, luckily for me, 
I taught, I mean, I taught plumbers in the union how to do blueprint reading and drawing, isometric drawings, things like that. What I would tell you is we don't draw a lot. We do need to draw, like, like on our jobs, when I send a guy out to do leak location on a sewer or water line, I want them to draw out the system. That way we can show people what tested good, what tested bad, what we need to replace, what repairs we need to do first. And stuff like that is really big to me. So no, you don't have to be good at drawing. Can it help you? You know, I think anything that we can do can help us get better, but don't just avoid plumbing because you think you're not good at drawing. Most plumbers aren't. Uh, pay wage for apprentice plumbers, anywhere starting out, probably anywhere from 15 to $20 an hour is, is a good, probably a good place to look at. And I know a lot of y'all are going to say, hey, look, you know, we, we don't make that where we're at. It really depends on where you're at in the country. Uh, plumbers up in New York and California make more than we do here in Texas. Plumbers in Chicago make more than we do here in Texas. So there's a lot of different opportunity out there. It just it depends on where you're at. It's going to be different for all of us. Uh, Gergi3 says, what's the best way to find or evaluate quality plumbers for residential work? You know, man, unfortunately, really about all you got is the reviews. Go look at reviews, see what, see what kind of reviews people get. And don't just read, you know, the top three reviews. Look at all of them. Look through them, see how many do they have. Do they have over 50 or over 100? And what kind of average do they have? Do they, do they normally get a five-star rating? Do they normally get a one-star rating? And, and that's a big deal. Look on social media, see what people are saying about them. You can literally search plumbers all the time and see what people are saying. Back in the forum, John says, I can't decide whether to go to college to major in construction management or go into the trades. I would probably do plumbing if I were to do a trade. All I know is that I want to work in the construction field. Any advice? Absolutely. John, here's the thing is, number one, what I would say first is, Go take my free mini course, and, and it's on my YouTube channel. There's a link to it. Go take it and figure out what kind of plumber you want to be. If you're wanting to take commercial, I mean, construction management, you're probably wanting to do commercial. You're probably wanting to do new construction. And if you are, I would say go to college first, get your construction management degree. You may become a project manager or something and never have to do the trades. If you want to be hands-on in plumbing, Maybe go get your construction management degree and then get into the trades. It'll help you in the long run. But what I would tell you is think about your end game. Where do you want to be? What do you want to do? Do you want to eventually own your own company? Do you want to work for somebody else the rest of your life? Do you want to work on the same job every day for years? Do you want a different job every day? There's so many different opportunities out there that literally you've kind of got to figure out what you think is best for you. And once you figure that out, then you can make those decisions. If you want to manage big commercial jobs, you may not even need to get in the trades. Learn construction management, learn project management. And it's a whole different route in, but it's a great opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew Crossland says, Roger, I work for a large plumbing company. Uh, if not the nation's largest, been here four years, looking to go out on my own soon. You've helped give me the push that I can do it. You're the bomb. Thank you. So, you know, that this is the kind of stuff that I would say, look, if you know, I talked about this a while ago in a comment and I put a link in there, which is the tradesacademy.com slash feedback. Look, if, if I've given you any value and I'm going to read this exactly the way we wrote it down. Says so guys, we're really excited about helping you get into the trades as efficiently as possible. And so we oh, also we are developing a program to help you do that. This won't be college level costs, but it will be valuable. So if you like to enter, get free access, leave us some feedback on what you've liked, learned, or accomplished from these trade talks videos. And we're going to pick at least one person from each week's entries to win the program for free when it launches in the next 
couple of months. So the website is www.thetradetalksacademy.com slash feedback. And guys, I tell you, I'm excited about this. I'm continuing. I mean, I'm working around the clock on <clears throat> YouTube, on the Trade Talks, the Academy, the training, everything that we're trying to put together. And I got to tell you, man, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm loving it. it. It is literally, it's just, there's so much great opportunity to help people. And I see this as a wonderful way. So when I see comments like this about, you know, you've helped me, you've given me the push that I need. This is what I want to do for people. Help them get in the trades, help them become the best tradesmen and, and see what we can do to make them grow. And this is a really good one. I just happened to see. Uh, help, I need more sleep. Says, have you ever been judged for your job choice? Absolutely. Uh, and, and we all are. And it's not a bad thing. I used to, it, it's funny because I moved down to Austin. And I lived down there for about three years. And I, I literally, I had people that whenever I told them I was a plumber, and of course I'm talking girls, whenever I told them I was a plumber, I mean, it's like they just quit talking to you. It's like, oh God. The funny thing is, I felt bad about that. So I started telling people, well, I'm in construction. And, and, and they looked at me a completely different way. So I told people that for a while, but then it's like, you know what? I really, I'm proud of being a plumber and I think I'm good at it. I, I love what I do. And I just, I think the opportunity there makes it well worthwhile. So what I'll tell you is don't let what other people say or think about you judge what you do. Because my whole thing is I'm proud to be a plumber. I help people. I help people's lives get better. And, you know, they, the old saying is plumbers protect the health of the nation. And we do it by putting in sanitary plumbing that keeps people from getting sick. So there's a lot of opportunity in the trades. Don't let other people's thoughts interfere with you. Because <clears throat> what I'll tell you is I've got a good job that I love. I, I love what I do for a living. I think the opportunities that I have in my life are, are truly a blessing. I think that the, the whole big thing about joining the trades and getting in and learning, man, people are going to need plumbers for the rest of their lives. And the opportunities that we have to help people help make their lives better and do things, and it's a big deal. And I really, uh, I'm just telling you, help I need sleep or help I need more sleep, man, don't let that slow you down. The, the, the trades are amazing and it really doesn't matter to me what people think about me being a plumber. Uh, I, I've got a, a nicer car, a better house. Uh, I've got toys. Uh, I used to have a, a truck and a motor, I mean, a, a motorcycle. Uh, I got rid of it because I wanted to, but now I'm looking at getting another one. Do what you want to do to make you happy and, and don't worry about anybody else. It really is a big deal. Uh, Jenton Silva says, just post to the waterline on Reddit. Thank you very much. I'm sure Paul will see it and we will go from there. Uh, Paul Peck says, that's awesome. Matthew Carlson. Okay. I don't have sprinklers, but my bill's $300 in Houston. All we do is take showers and drink water. Uh, man, that's, that's pretty high. You might look at the video that I did about that meter dog. Contact me about one of those. Uh, man, $300 sounds like a pretty high bill. Uh, here in Minnesota, master can do done too long. Cleveland and can do natural gas. I like that. Do you open carry a farm during work? I don't open carry a farm anywhere. I'm licensed to, but I, I prefer to be concealed. That way nobody knows I've got it. Steve Arloa says, yes, and why does natural gas? I like this. Used to pop new homes for natural gas with his dad. I love that. Uh, pressure zone for high rise. Okay. Yes. And it can be. You're right. In the UK, we're not allowed to touch gas unless... 
gas qualified. That's pretty cool. Or you'll be reported, lose your license, possibly charged legally. And see over here, man, we're the ones that do it. And that's it. Flush your water heater annually. That'll help keep the problem out, but start it in the beginning. And this is a good one. Anthony Franco, you need to look at the video that we did last Friday. Uh, we literally, I crawled up under the house, look at work that my guys had already done. We normally tunnel under the houses and things like that, but it doesn't always happen. Work for National Guard currently, so can touch anything. I wish from the services from road into the house, the gas meters, and beyond. Good for you. So you need to move down here and get a job in Texas because we do it all too. Sean says, thanks. He's actually got this water heater installed done. It's been a bear. Sean, how long has it taken you? Just out of curiosity. Angel says, hello from Puerto Rico. Good to have you in here. And Matthew says, draw my sketches to help figure out what parts I'll need to do the job. And I love that. And, and I got to tell you, I think that is such a big deal. If, you know, a good plumber knows what he needs. And if you've got to draw it out and make a material list, do a complete takeoff, man, I, I love that, Matthew. I think that is phenomenal. It's a great way to do it. I'm going to jump back over into the forum for a few minutes. Bubba says, I use my water for showering and drinking. Yeah, brother, you, you may be are getting the high water bill down there. Matt says, the water heater is 10-year-old, wondering if I should replace it now or wait until it's safe outside. You know, here's the deal. I, th I think it's safe outside, depending on where you're at. Here's what I would tell you is, is your water heater in a position where it can cause damage? If it starts leaking, will it damage sheetrock? Will it damage anything at all? If it does, look at replacing it now. Don't wait. Anonymous says, why is my sink spitting yellow water? Uh, it there could be a, a break in the line. It could have mud in it. The city could be doing repairs. There's a lot of different things that it could be. Uh, man, kind of hard to see. I'll tell you what, like I told them earlier, take a video of it, post it to the subreddit that is actually right there. And Sean Strong, myself, somebody, we'll get a look at it and tell you what we, can, what we think about it. It's kind of hard to answer questions like that when you can't see it. COVID says, how many years did it take you to become a master plumber? In Texas, if you go through a DOL training program, meaning it's the union, it's PHCC, something like that, it's four years to get your journeyman. If you go through a DOL training program, it's one more year to get your master's. If not, it's four more years to get your master's. So it can be done in as quick as five. It can take as long as eight. Good questions today. Sam says, already looked at that one. I completely agree. I think a high rise would be a great one. Nath says, how much do you earn for a year? And does the price depend on how bad the plumbing is that needs to be done? It really doesn't depend on how bad it is. What really depends on is what your company charges, what, how well you do the job, what the quality is, what, what, what all you sell them, what all you do. Uh, a plumber, a journeyman plumber here in Texas can make anywhere from $75,000, $80,000 a year to over two hundred. dollars it, it really is that broad of a range. And when I say over two hundred, dollars I mean over $200,000 a year. Colton Hall says, what is the nastiest thing you've got on you while plumbing? Uh, poop. That's probably pretty easy. Maybe parts of a dead animal. Uh, things like that. Kyle says, how would you work on a plumbing system if the home has a full basement? Uh, and if it's got a full basement, it's a lot easier because most of the plumbing is right there overhead for you. If they don't have a basement, I mean, think about it. If you're down in a basement, you look at the plumbing. If it's a full basement, most of the plumbing is right there below it. The only thing you're going to have underground is what goes outside. And if you're at a basement, it's probably colder outside. So it's liable to take a while to dig that down that deep anyway, because remember, they bury it a lot deeper. So guys, I have got all the questions in the form answered, I do believe. Uh, it has been fun today. I want to say a special thank you to Sean Strong, Virgil, Liz, Austin, Grayson, Amber, and Julie. 
the moderators that make things happen make me look good. Okay, they don't make me look good. I want to say a special thanks to Paul Peck. Guys, if you are not subscribed to Paul Peck Drywall Tube, go over there and check out his channel. He's doing great things. I love watching him and learning from him. I also want to say a special thanks to Sean Strong for being in here. Uh, like I said, Sean does a lot over on my subreddit. He takes care of a lot of things for me. And man, he is really good. If you're not connected with him on Instagram, it's boom underscore the plumber at boom the plumber. Uh, I think that he is, man, he's doing good things and I like the way he does it. And I guess that's probably the best way to put it. So, you know, what I would tell you is, and it's been a busy day today. A lot of people in here, great questions, great comments, good stuff. Uh, man, Paul Peck, thank you, brother. The neat thing is, look, I love what I get to do. I think that we're lucky in the fact that we get to do the things that man, we enjoy. I made a life out of plumbing now. I get to talk about it and help others learn it. I think it's amazing. So, guys, if you hadn't done it yet, give us a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell. That way you get notified when we're doing stuff like this. And I will see y'all back here next week. I had to think about where I'm at and what I'm going to be doing. So anyway, I will see you back here next week. Thank you all for being here. And if you like this, share it out to somebody. If you know somebody that can learn something about plumbing or the trades by watching this, do me a favor and share it out and let them know. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.